सबको बधाई और वो भी दिवाली के बीच में दिवाली छठ के लिए बहुत साथ ही निकल रहे हैं घर फिर भी हॉल भर गया है तो सभी को उसके लिए बधाई ये तो शायद आज हमारे जो स्पीकर हैं उनका ही एक इंट्रोडक्शन हो गया कि प्रोफेसर उज्जवल को सुनने के लिए ड्यू से भी और जे के अलग अलग डिपार्टमेंट से सोशल साइंस नॉन सोशल साइंस सब लोग मिल आज आए हैं और तो स्पीकर को मैं आ, स्पीकर के काम को लेके मैं ज्यादा अभी नहीं बोलूंगा लेकिन आज जो टॉपिक है इसका आ, चर्चा क्यों जरूरी है ये शायद हम लोग सभी कहीं ना कहीं महसूस कर रहे हैं चाहे वो हमारे कोर्स में हो या कोर्स के बाहर हो क्योंकि आ, मतलब ये समाज का एक आज मुद्दा बन गया है और जो एक मतलब एक्सेप्शनल चीज होना चाहिए था एक एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी लॉ नाम में ही एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी है वो आज कहीं ना कहीं एक नॉर्मल रूटीन ऑर्डनरी एवरीडे चीज बन गया है जिसको लेके लगातार जे एन के स्टूडेंट कम्युनिटी सड़कों पे भी और क्लासरूम में भी इसको उठाते रही है तो आज हमारा जो टॉपिक है रावलट एक्ट टू यू ये पिछले हफ्ते यू के संदर्भ में कुछ कुछ जो डेवलपमेंट हुए उस कॉन्टेक्स में हम लोग बहुत ही जल्दी में आज का प्रोग्राम ऑर्गेनाइज किए हैं और प्रोफेसर सिंह आज हमारे साथ जुड़ पाए इसके वजह से ही ये प्रोग्राम हो पा रहा है Uh, पिछले हफ्ते डी uh, 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 के प्रोफेसर जी एन साईबाबा और उनके साथ पांच को एक्यूज जिनमें से साथी हेम हमारे जे के ही स्टूडेंट है uh, आठ साल के बाद uh, लग रहा था कि बेल का अपील हुआ था और सुप्रीम uh, कोर्ट ने बेल uh, मंजूर भी कर लिया था लेकिन 24 घंटे के अंदर हम लोग देखते हैं किस तरीके से एक स्पेशल बेंच बिठाया जाता है जबकि सुप्रीम कोर्ट का छुट्टी था और दो ऐसे जज गुजरात से उठा के लाए जाते हैं जो 15 मिनट के अंदर ऑर्डर सुना देते हैं कि बेल रिजेक्ट किया जा रहा है दो दिन पहले ही साथी उमर खालिद जो जे के स्टूडेंट है और एन टी प्रोटेस्ट में एक यूथ लीडर के हिसाब से हमारे सामने मतलब पूरे देश में एक चेहरा बन के आए थे उनको सरकार को यू के तहत जेल में लॉक करना पड़ा है और उनके बेल को भी दो दिन पहले रिजेक्ट किया गया तो इन मतलब कुछ डिफीट हुए हैं उस तरीके से हमारे देश के जो जनवादी आंदोलन है उसके इस हफ्ते लेकिन इसके बावजूद इतने लोग आज यू पर बात करने आए हैं यही कहीं ना कहीं दिखाता है कि एक दूसरा भविष्य हमारे देश में संभव है और ये मतलब मतलब भविष्य और इतिहास का जो रिश्ता है वो भी हमारे टाइटल में है कि रावलट एक्ट टू यू कि हम लोग सब जानते हैं कि जलनवाला कांड जब हुआ था जहाँ पे हजार के ऊपर लोग मारे गए थे जनरल डायर के आदेश पर वो गैदरिंग हुआ था एक कानून के खिलाफ जिसका नाम था एनार्किस्ट एंड रेवोल्यूशनरी क्राइम्स एक्ट और आ, मतलब ये कानून ऐसे टाइम पे लाया गया था जब पूरे देश भर में और दुनिया भर में एक्चुअली आयरिश होम रूल लीग से शुरू करके गदर पार्टी से शुरू करके अनुशीलन समिति से शुरू करके एक बगावत का माहौल था जितने भी साम्राज्यवादी देश थे वो कहीं ना कहीं हरबरा गए थे कि पूरे दुनिया भर में जो कॉलोनाइज नेशंस है वहां पे एक तरीके का एंटी कॉलोनियल मूवमेंट का न्यू रचा जा रहा था तो उसको कहीं रोकने के लिए इस तरीके रावलट एक्ट की जरूरत पड़ी थी और उसके खिलाफ मतलब आजादी का आंदोलन जब हम लोग अक्सर टेक्स्ट बुक में पढ़ते हैं तो लगता है कि ये कोई कॉमन सेंस था कि सब लोग आजादी के लिए एक साथ आ गए लेकिन 20 से 50 के दशक तक जो अलग अलग आंदोलन हुए जिससे ये आजादी देशवासियों के लिए एक मुद्दा बना चाहे वो वर्कर्स यूनियन के इंडस्ट्रियल डिस्प्यूट एक्ट के खिलाफ लगातार आंदोलन हो या अवध के एक आंदोलन हो या अलग अलग किसान आंदोलन हो तेभागा तेलंगाना के भूमिहीन खेत मजदूरों का आंदोलन हो कहीं ना कहीं आजादी के साथ एक उम्मीद थी कि जो नया देश बनेगा वो 
वहां पे इन तरीके के काले कानूनों की इन तरीके की एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी लॉज की वहां पे जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी लेकिन हम पाते हैं कि आजादी के तुरंत बाद जो प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन एक्ट था जहाँ पे बिना कोई चार्ज के बिना कोई सबूत के आपको डिटेन कर लिया जा सकता था उसको आजादी के कुछ घंटे बाद कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट असेंबली जब वो लैप्स हो जाती है जब अंग्रेज सरकार चली जाती है और नया भारत आता है वहां पे कुछ घंटों के अंदर फिर से प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन लॉ को लाया जाता है अफ्सपा को साठ के दशक में वापस लाया जाता है पहले मणिपुर और नागालैंड और मिजोरम कुछ कुछ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट एरिया घोषित किए जाते हैं वहां पे लाया जाता है और उसके बाद हर छह महीने हर दो साल उसको एक्सटेंड कर दिया जाता है और अभी पिछले साठ साल हो गए हैं अभी भी अफ्सपा लागू है और पुलिस के जगह पे आर्मी वहां पे पुलिस का काम करती है जहाँ पे तथा कथित कॉन्फ्लिक्ट जोन है साथ साथ हमारे देश में ऐसे अलग अलग कानून रहे हैं चाहे वो टाडा हो पोटा हो और आगे चल के 2004 में अमेंडेड यूएपीए हो जिनमें कहीं ना कहीं यही है कि अगर आपके खिलाफ ऑर्डिनरी लॉ हिसाब से सबूत ना हो आप जो एविडेंस का स्टैंडर्ड है उसको नीचे कर दिया जाता है ताकि कुछ तरीके के पॉलिटिकल uh, एक्टिविस्ट हो कुछ तरीके के ट्रेड यूनियन लीडर हो और uh, अलग अलग जो डेमोक्रेटिक राइट्स मूवमेंट के uh, जो आवाज उठा रहे हैं उनको बंद कर दिया जाता है ऐसे कानूनों के तहत तो ऐसे कानून क्यों जरूरत है एक लोकतांत्रिक देश में क्या लोकतांत्रिक देश में ऐसे कानूनों के लिए कोई जगह है ये सवाल हम लोग आज पूछ रहे हैं कि क्यों जरूरत पड़ती है कि रावलट एक्ट को लाया जाए और क्यों जरूरत पड़ती है कि आज यूएपीए को लाया जा रहा है मतलब ऐसे कुछ राजनीतिक विचारधारा है जो हमारे सत्ताधारी ताकतों को चुनौती देती है और आज जब हम लोग पूरे देश में मोदी सरकार आने के बाद एक मतलब आजादी के बाद शायद ऐतिहासिक तौर पे इतना बड़ा आंदोलन नहीं हुआ है डेमोक्रेसी को बचाने के लिए लेकिन हम मानते हैं कलेक्टिव के तरफ से आज हम लोग ये चर्चा इसीलिए कर रहे हैं कि आज सिर्फ डेमोक्रेसी को बचाने की ही बात नहीं बल्कि डेमोक्रेसी को आगे बढ़ाने की जरूरत है और एक नए देश की कल्पना को लोगों के बीच में लेके आने की जरूरत है क्योंकि यूएपीए को जब दो में अमेंड किया गया बीजेपी द्वारा तो और यूएपीए में ये कहा गया कि अभी आपको किसी बैंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का मेंबर होना भी और जरूरी नहीं है किसी इंडिविजुअल को भी टेररिस्ट घोषित किया जा सकता है और उसके ऊपर ऐसे एक्स्ट्रा कानून लगाए जा सकते हैं तो हम देखते हैं कि जो विपक्षी दल है वो भी बोले कि ये कानून तो सही है लेकिन इसमें दो क्लॉज है जिसको लेके हमें आपत्ति है तो इसको रिव्यू किया जाना चाहिए लेकिन जब राज्यसभा में वोट होता है तब जो विपक्षी दल भी है चाहे वो कांग्रेस हो चाहे वो बहुजन समाज पार्टी हो वो भी इस कानून के पक्ष में वोट करते हैं और कुछ दल वॉकआउट करते हैं और साथ ही में मतलब यहाँ तक कि जो लेफ्ट की पार्टियां जहाँ पे सी का केरला में राज है वहां पर भी अभी हम पाते हैं कि जो यूएपीए के केस लगाए गए थे वहां पे तीन केस में अभी हाल ही में बेल में दिया गया था वहां पर भी उसको सुप्रीम कोर्ट में चैलेंज किया जाता है और ओवररूल किया जाता है तो अलग अलग जो राजनीतिक दल है इसके सीमा को आज बढ़ाने की जरूरत है राजनीतिक जो विचारधारा हमारे देश में जिसको जनता के बीच में रखे जा सकते हैं हम मानते हैं कि इसको और आज बढ़ाने की जरूरत है और इसीलिए हम ऐसे कानूनों का विरोध करते हैं तो जब हम लोग रिपील यूएपीए बोलते हैं उसके साथ कहीं ना कहीं जुड़ा हुआ है कि एक नया तरीके का लोकतंत्र हमारे देश में आएगा जहां पे मजदूरों की किसानों की मेहनत कश आवाम के राजनीति को लोगों के बीच में रखा जा पाएगा और उसके उसको रोकने के लिए यूएपीए जैसे कानूनों की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी यूएपीए का कानून अगर हम लोग देखते हैं कि तो पीयूसीएल के एक रिपोर्ट के हिसाब से 2015 से 2020 के बीच में यूएपीए के कि जितने केस लगाए गए उसमें तो बहुत ग्रोथ हुआ ही है लेकिन उसका जो कन्विक्शन रेट है वो केवल 2.8 परसेंट है मतलब यूएपीए कानून जब लगाया ही जाता है तब पता होता है कि जो ट्रायल का प्रोसेस है वो ही पनिशमेंट है और कन्विक्शन की उम्मीद भी जो प्रोसिक्यूटर है वो एक्सपेक्ट ही नहीं करते हैं प्रोफेसर उपेंद्र बख्शी जो हमारे देश के कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल लॉ के एक बड़े नाम हैं वो कहते हैं कि हमारे देश में दो कानून चलते हैं एक जो ऑर्डिनरी क्रिमिनल लॉ का कानून है और दूसरा जो इस तरीके के एक्स्ट्रा लॉज का कानून है जो अलग अलग राज्यों में पुलिस जिसको यूज करके पोलिटिकल डिसिडेंट पोलिटिकल ओपोनेंट को टारगेट किए जा रही है तो इस पृष्ठभूमि पर आज हम लोग इस डिस्कशन में जुड़ रहे हैं हमारे साथ प्रोफेसर उज्जवल कुमार सिंह दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी पॉलिटिकल साइंस डिपार्टमेंट से आज जुड़ पाए हैं अलग अलग रिसर्च इंटरेस्ट में एक पर्टिकुलरली 
उनका लंबा काम रहा है ये एक्स्ट्रॉर्डिनरी लॉज एंटी टेरर लॉज और हाल ही में पोलिटिकल प्रिजनर्स के ऊपर द स्टेट डेमोक्रेसी एंड एंटी टेरर लॉज इन इंडिया उनका किताब है uh, और इस इस uh, लंबे इतिहास पर रॉलट एक्ट सी यू ए पी ए तक के इतिहास पर आज वो हमारे बीच की बात रखेंगे टू थिंग्स was declared innocent and nagpur bench of maharashtra high court ordered his release so it was actually overturning the conviction and so the judgment was laid down and it was challenged by uh, maharashtra government and supreme court and there was urgency in that so they pushed for you know a uh, special hearing uh, which in the past has happened for some cases but it's the norm that you know uh, especially remember what happened uh, another very senior judge of supreme court by which i'm sure it was mentioned in court and he said uh, there's no hurry we'll wait for uh, things to take this in due course so you have a judge who will be incumbent chief justice will be next chief justice he verbally gives a statement in spite of that you have a two judge bench which meets and deliberate and what was the deliberation about deliberation what was this section which i'm going to read to you uh, so we are not lawyer but in order to appreciate what happens you need to know the facts so i'll be specially i would like to bring facts before you and uh, means in different capacity i would be but i'm not part of solidarity meeting you may have solidarity meeting but i'm here to actually present you things as it is and and then and you know specially to differ with me or if you differ with shorya or some of these that's important it's important that you differ and and speak your voice because what is happening there is only one voice if the voice is different to completely gone so be you know that we need to celebrate, celebrate those differences as well so here is uh, section 45 of what is known as unlawful activities prevention act huh? this is the act which we are talking about we'll go back to this act but specifically what happened with this case so as per provision of this act uh, section 45 this is cognizance of offences see remember i am also not a lawyer but these things we can understand and we should understand it says under chapter 3 without the previous sanction of the central government or any officer authorized by central government on this behalf under chapter 4 and 6 without the previous sanction of the central government or as the case may be the state government and such offence is committed against the government of a foreign country without the previous sanction of the central government now basically what it says that when under unlawful activities prevention act if you will file a case then you need to take permission from a competent authority in certain cases will be central government in certain cases will be state government Confiscate government. I know that the central government. Now there is another way to check. It's not so difficult. You all have access to the net. If you go onto MHA site, Ministry of Home Affairs site, they have every month they sum up the achievement, the achievement of MHA. So you won't get for the past maybe one or two months. I didn't get time. I wanted to actually compile the entire January to uh, you know. September thing, but you certainly get generally there will be something. So there will be small paragraph about how many cases are sanctioned for prosecution under UAP. On average, fifty fifty five every every month you find, and from there you actually get the numbers how many cases sanctioned under UAP. So central government has to give permission. Okay, this is the procedural safeguard. This is the safeguard under UAP that when you <laughs> investigate and then you apply UAPA. Then you need government sanction to do that. Under UAPA, there are very few safeguards, but this is one small safeguard. Normally, ninety-nine percent they get, you know, sanction as such. In this case of Sai Baba, government did not take sanction, right? So court said you have done everything, but you have not followed procedure, and procedures are important because. 
under UP, you know, it's so stringent that if even this small procedure, if you don't follow, what will you do? I'll come to other part of UP. So it was perfectly lawful. All I'm saying is I'm reading you law because it was perfectly lawful for the Nagpur High Court to say that you know this entire trial should be declared null and void. Remember, Nagpur High Court also said that you can take sanction against and again prosecute, and so the principle of double jeopardy won't apply. Like you, know, you cannot be punished twice for the same crime. Possible provision, I'll read it to you. That's a, that's a fundamental right. So they said you can do that. So you have a case where High Court is giving enough of space that you can get sanctioned, prosecute again. What Supreme Court Ujjab Ben says, okay, this has not happened. So the lawyer of Sai Baba, they asked, did you raise this issue in the trial court? Right? Now, see the case is the way it ran. More or less people know the inner deal. They know that, you know, prosecution will bring certain evidences, false or correct. It will lead to conviction or long years of under trial. So whatever reason, they hadn't raised. Right? It was assumed that they have given writing or something like this. Now what is happening in trial, the burden is now on the defense lawyer to prove that you have. Remember I read you this. It's very clearly mentioned as per law that the prosecution must take permission. It's not written that defense will have to ask for prosecution to take permission. Huh? Okay. Example में फंस जाता हूँ और मैं अभी फंसने वाला हूँ लेकिन अब आप क्लास में नहीं जाते हैं हाँ अब मेरा काम है पूछना पा नहीं रहे हैं अब मैं आपसे पूछता हूँ कि आप क्यों नहीं आ रहे आपने क्यों परमिशन लिया कि नहीं अरे भाई मेरा काम है मुझको अटेंडेंस लेना है तो मुझको अपना रखना पड़ेगा रिकॉर्ड कल से स्टूडेंट अटेंडेंस रजिस्टर रखने पड़ेगा तो मुश्किल हो जाएगी टीचर्स को बंद नहीं कर पाएंगे तो अब वो एग्जाम्पल गलत हो जाएगा बट ओवर यू इज वेरी क्लियर दैट Government failed to actually follow the procedures, and under UAP procedures are important. So this is about the case which Sorya talked about. Okay, rest of the thing, you know, a part of different debate. What did the already Sai Baba had, or what grounds he was prosecuted? Fact is that he was found innocent of this. And when you find innocence, you find actually going to both. Don't say it's just technical matter. Technical law is all about technical matters, right? Because otherwise, this law is so expansive that everything is covers under this, including trust me, even this speech would come under this, right? So it's, it's so, so only thing is to have your safeguards. So one thing about certain case, I'll come you know because small parts are important over here. Uh, there is something called burden of proof in ordinary law. It is prosecution. Which will prove that you have committed a crime. हाँ, आप खुल करके भाग जाएंगे। ऐसा होगा नहीं, but आप भाग गए। हाँ, अब आपको पकड़ लिए, इनको पकड़ लिए। आप भागे इनको पकड़ लिए कि आप बताइए कि आपने खुल किया कि नहीं किया। अब ये क्या करेगा? कितना खुल करेगा? पुलिस तो है नहीं। पुलिस तो कोई और है ना भाई। So there is something called burden of proof that you are innocent till the time of proven guilty and evidences will be brought in against you right, by the police. It's not your task to investigate. Okay. Now, it's reversed in many laws and that's a serious thing. I'll come to extraordinary there. But I, let me bring you something else which is much been talked about. Right? Sometimes you're very happy that it's happening. Its issue is money laundering, and this act called CMLA, the Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. It this act is terrorizing many people. Many AAP ministers and MLA have been booked under this. Or different, depending on your viewpoint, some may be happy about this, some may be well, not. So I'm not going to this. But just about the law, what it says, and this will help you to understand. What is presumption of you know uh, burden of proof? Thank you for 
वैसे तो ये साइलेंट पे रहता है वैसे तो फोन भी तो आप पॉटर स्विच करके लोग रखते हैं ना आप लोग मालूम है ना फोन सुनता है ना नहीं मालूम फोन सुनता है आपको लग रहा नहीं सुनता फोन स्विच ऑफ में भी सुन देगा लेकिन अब सुनेगा तो सुनेगा मनी लॉन्ड्री अंडर सेक्शन थ्री द अथॉरिटी और कोर्ट शैल अनलेस दी प्रूव प्रिज्यूम that such proceeds of crimes are involved in as money laundering unless proved otherwise if something is found in your home in your farm house in your industry in your factory it will be assumed that this is something which is illegal uh, you know until this is proved otherwise so its onus is upon you to prove that what you have earned or property which you have which is legitimate property burden has shifted to you okay Admit the document in evidence, not withstanding that it is not duly stamped. If such document is otherwise admissible in evidence, simple thing is, until it is proven otherwise, if something you are caught with something, you have to prove that something legitimate. In all other cases, in normal cases, it is police which have to prove that what you have in hand is illegal. Now, this is again a very important part of it. See, UAP that we are talking about. is only one among numerous such laws which are operating in the country right it's only one law and laws in that sense won't discriminate among people once a political authority decides that you know you are the enemy all such laws are brought in okay all such laws are brought in from ordinary laws to extraordinary laws So when Sawyer talked about Pin Bakshi's framework, that is ordinary set of law, Criminal Procedure Code, IPC, you know, in the Penal Code, these are ordinary. They are safe rights there, right? But they are very, very exhaustive. Okay. On the other hand, there are certain laws which come. So this law is for against money laundering. Remember, money laundering is a global problem. It's a global challenge. and basically such laws were brought in to tackle issue of terrorism and let's not deny there is terrorism very clearly there is terrorism i mean you and i won't like to you know live under shadow of a gun well let's be very clear on that account so guns whatever form is not acceptable right and in that sense such money laundering because it was based on funding All kind of black marketing and also terrorism, right? The obvious of it. So it's it's a global phenomena, and the international norm for that. In fact, all such laws which we are talking about, quota, money laundering, they all are introduced in the parliament also. And because you are in JNU and you have a special school called SIS here, and I'm sure you are not taught these things over there, but you need to know that international covenant, international treaties. actually demand that all countries should have laws to enforce international rules regulations and treaties what also came in that sense there was 1332 un resolution after you know 911 attacks and then all state nations were asked to frame law in the you know to tackle terrorism pml also comes into place so you will have international norms you will have such laws coming into existence the problem with such laws is they claim to tackle something very very devious something which is extraordinary something which is you know um, full of evil and problem that the claim is right so terrorism is one money laundering is another and likewise you can keep on adding now as a result what the claim is that such laws are needed to tackle these very special situations 
militancy, terrorism, money laundering. No. Now, in, in newspaper, you have read, and that's worrisome. Worrisome reasons, which you know, probably you won't agree. Past three days, there is a race upon gangsters by NI. Now, everyone would say, what's wrong with that? Gangsters are like, you know, enemies, they need to be curtailed. And an NIA. I'll come to that. I see there's a problem because NIA is not supposed to do that. NIA is something special which is supposed But anyway, they are doing it, right? But such laws come with, you know, uh, you know with the claim that the special situation has arisen and we need to tackle that. Now, very principle of special is that it's special, it's exception, right? It's not regular, right? But if it's a day, आपकी पुलिस है आपके बाकी कानून है तो कहां तो जाता है कि ये अगर अब मैं गलत एग्जांपल ले बड़े गलत होते हैं बोलना तो जेनी वाइन में सौ मर्डर अब आप ही उठ के चले जाएंगे अब यहां के बारे में आप ही उठ के फैला रहे हैं वैसे बहुत कुछ फैला हुआ है है ना तो चलिए इसका एग्जांपल ले देते हैं बट इफ यू नो इफ इफ यू टॉक टू एनी पुलिस ऑफिसर मर्डर टेकिंग प्लेस इन देयर एरिया इज अ वेरी सीरियस थिंग बिकॉज़ देयर देयर हैव टू लॉट ऑफ पेपर पेपर वर्क and every person told when it comes to murder right other things they can tackle but you know they would map the efficacy of the police research in terms of how many murders and least the murder is the best right so murder is something serious crime right you taking the life of someone it's a serious crime <laughs> robbery you may get upset you know pickpocket you may get upset you really get upset when phone someone picks up aap ko lagta hai bas dusre ka khoon chus lenge hai ji Like you know, because the mobile is gone, everything is there, right? But it's a different thing as such. So special laws, our claims are that you know, special laws come to tackle special situation. Obviously, the logic is once such laws work, normalcy should be restored, right? Simple logic. Uh, any problem with the logic? A special situation, extraordinary situation, crime of terror, militancy, <coughs> gun culture. You know, contraband, money laundering, something special. Not normal, right? Pickpocketing is normal. Exam cheating is normal, right? Uh, so, then to tackle such, you need special powers. You can't handle that because you know they are cause have grown out of this country, this society. So, special powers would be reflected in laws. So, such laws would have special provisions, right? That's the logic. Now the challenge is it's supposed to bring normalcy, है ना? आप चाहते तो normalcy में हैं। If it was supposed to bring normalcy, then such law should have a life. No, Punjab disturbances, Tata came in. So when Punjab disturbances are resolved, Tata should go away. Kota comes in a certain extent, right? If that is good, what has happened is laws are continued. Problems are not being resolved, right? As a result, you are bringing more and more stringent laws, right? So what came as a temporary measure became permanent. That's the whole story of UAP. When UAP, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, was brought in 1967, Vajpayee, remember Vajpayee belonged to Jan Sang, right? BJP is not even recognizing. They won't be Vajpay, right? It's left for others to recognize Vajpay. Vajpay opposed that. Mupesh Gupta was CPI. They were all opposite. They opposed that, right? In '67, UAP when it was brought in, they opposed that. UK continued. Then comes later Tata. Okay, '83. You know, Act comes in '85. Tata comes in, <laughs> and then. Tata became such a routine business that when its review came in Parliament, there were hardly a dozen members. Remember, it's a very, very, you know, uh, uh, difficult law, draconian law. I'm, I'm careful with the word because you know you think draconian would be a substitute for analysis. Draconian is a term actually used by the minister who introduces such law. So L K Advani, when they brought in Tata, he said it's a draconian law. Remember, draconian is not something adjective you are adding to the law. That law is meant to deter you, meant to deter you in such a serious manner that you and future generation would never like to commit a crime because it's 
you know, pre-trials of tennis. But Tata, which is one of the most draconian, more than Porta, and trust me, even more than UAP, it did not succeed. Over 75,000 arrests. Conviction rate was very small, one percent around. Okay, you will be surprised the largest number of arrests and any guess which which province has largest number of arrests in the Tata. See, I am whatever you call speaker, but I am a teacher, so I, I have a habit of asking questions. You can't take away that right from me. So, any any idea where Tata was in post? Which which state of this country the large, largest number of arrests took place? Any guess? Assam, somebody said. Arunachal Pradesh, no. Huh? Maharashtra. Huh? Remember, it came in wake of Punjab disturbances. I'm giving you answer. Will someone take the answer? Which state? Punjab. And I really want this. I really like it when you say wrong thing, and I push you to say wrong thing. <laughs> Gujarat. <laughs> I'll tell you reason. Prasoon Vajpayee probably won't stand for this, but he had a report on Tata. Prasoon Vajpayee, who? Yeah, his report. His report. His report. His report. His Large number of Adivasis were arrested under that. Large number of Adivasis. So we thinking of you know. So just think. You think of. Someone like you know who's this image of terror, Pale Kuchori Metha, Tavanka, we Kuchori Mejaga, we know that, right? But that image defied. It was someone else who came in. Large red number for us. Fine? Remember, I'm talking about pre 2004 days, 2005 days, 2007 days, three of those days, right? Now, <coughs> so many arrests in the Tata, right? Now, logic is a bit challenging over here. When you talk in terms of, you know, and, and you know, so let me also bring one more statistics. I'll speak through evidence, you know, you can challenge me through evidence, but you know, evidence challenge me on evidence, right? I'm prepared to be challenge everything. Uh, and if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll accept, you know, I'll try to help in my research. So this is, uh, we can't, don't even see in class that read by. But this is coming from a public speaking, I can say it's not in classroom, so I can speak through wire. So wire gives him this data, which nearly everyone knows. So as per wire, and this is uh with time and uh total number of cases 5027 in which there were 24,134 accused under UAPA from 2016 to 2020. So around 24,000 accused under UAPA in four years, right? And data says, this is Home Ministry data, so you know, I won't like to question Home Ministry, I'm very safe. So, you know, <laughs> so 212 out of 24,000 people were convicted. You can calculate, you know, political sign will take because they're pretty bad in maths. And there's someone from computer side who will help us. That's why I kept on asking who, where are you coming from. So 212 out of so 24,134 people and 386 people who were accused under the UAP have been acquitted. So you take out 386 who are acquitted means who are free by OC. And 212, you know, convicted, rest are under tracks. Either they get bail, and we know under quota, under UAP, it's virtually impossible to get bail. You do get bail. It's not that you don't get You do get bail, but it's really impossible. You know, it's so difficult, right? So you have so many numbers which are still in jail, right? Under UAP. Two kinds of arguments. Fine, they've been involved in an act of terror. What's wrong with that? Okay? They should be in jail. Many people believe. I believe that part of the country believes people should be in jail. Huh? Our jail is very humid, who say humid, right? Report that the button of jail. Another logic is only so many people convicted. So there's some problem with the law. Make it more stringent. Right? If you work either data, you will say law is weak. 
make it more stringent so let's take up any other country the favorite country which we like love to be pakistan पाकिस्तान पाकिस्तान You know, you are taught in the class, and you will be taught in the class that, or my sample, why it will be taught that democracy is just a veneer. It's actually military which rules. So if military cannot come, then how can Porta Tata can come? How can you know more draconian law can come? My example is, remember, you can push the threshold of severity and draconianness. That's what will solve the problem. These are humans, and these are humans who are committing crime. Fine, and remember, don't bring this white and black line between you and crime. I know that you know. Other day, I thought what I didn't speak before the police. I was in police headquarters talking to students, and I thought I like asked them, and then I realized, oh no, no, say traffic violation. One chalan came. I don't know. Then you have to go online. I'm sure none of you have been chalan. Huh? Are your parents would pay the fine, right? But once you go down the side, there are some ten channels, and it's all in police station close to Delhi City. And the camera is so clear that you know my face come is not. Other cameras don't capture that camera captures so well. You can't even see. So I and you know my brother both are looking at it. And I was thinking now, उधर भी crime पकड़ा गया, घर में भी crime पकड़ा गया. All because that you know that zebra crossing. If we have a pass, the camera captured. I was, you know, two meters ahead of that. So, if you say criminality, I've also committed crime. All of you may have been there. So don't draw this line, right? People do commit crime. People do commit mistakes. They also reform. That's the system which we have. That's how human society is evolved. But when it comes to other people, our lines are so neatly drawn, bright lines. As if you know, they are born criminals and others are born citizens and humans as such, right? So you know, you you can keep on enforcing and bringing in more stringent and more stringent, but what is the end result? End result is that you keep them under as under trial. Difference, remember, also difference is UAPA, Porta and Tata Story laws are substantive laws. they actually identify crimes and they also tell you the quantum punishment in in kanuno mein ye hai ye substantive law hai ye ye detention law nahi hai detention law ki baat fir karte hain in kanuno mein pravadhan hai ki aapne kya crime kiya hai aur uske liye aapko kya punishment hai फांसी तक की सजा है हा तो पर्पस इनका है कि आप अगर किसी को पकड़ते हैं तो आप उनको ट्रायल पे लाए और उसके बाद एविडेंस लाए कोर्ट में ट्रायल पे लाए आपके पास सारी सुविधाएं हैं आपके पास पुलिस है पब्लिक प्रोसिक्यूटर है आप उनको कोर्ट में लाए ट्रायल करें और कन्वेंट करें वॉट रॉन्ग विद नाटल रिसर्च फोर्टी ईयर आई एम सियरिंग द सेम स्टोरी बिटागा 83 करीब करीब 40 तो पूरा हो गया कि 50 पूरा होना है 40 तक नहीं 50 तक तो पहले में करें बट आ या 22 23 आईटी सेकंड नाइन इयर सेम स्टोरी यू पिक अप पीपल यू पुट इन द जेल एंड आफ्टर बाय सो मेनी इयर सो रिमेंबर टागा वाज मोर डेंजरस टागा लैप्स्ड इन द सेंस इट वाज नॉट रिन्यूड बट those who are accused under tata they are still under trial under tata so it's very interesting law is dead long with the law like you know when you do political science and you read about british monarchy king is dead along with the king because the throne is never empty tata is never dead even now the people who are accused 
they are still being tried. Huh? I'll come to Tarba again. Porta had a review provision. So initially, Tarba started with two years ago, like every two years, you bring whatever cases you've done and you play before parliament. That's important in American framework, they'll call it oversight. Right? That you know there's legislative oversight. So what will happen in the world? कि आपने ये कानून लाया कानून के प्रावधान के अंदर जो जो आप किए हैं इतने अरेस्ट किए तो आपको एक रिपोर्ट संसद में देना है तो कम से कम एक चेक रहेगा कि कहीं अपनी बात आप बता रहे हैं और शायद विधायिका में कुछ सवाल इसमें उठे और दो साल के ऊपर फिर तीन साल के ऊपर जब फोटो लाएगा ऑर्डिनेंस लाया जाता तो कहा जाता कि पांच साल में रिव्यू करेंगे फिर उसके ऊपर प्रेशर बना तो तीन साल किया गया टाटा वॉस टू ईयर रिव्यू so what you did, gradually you up the threshold. Huh? Petrol ke to dam upar niche hote hain, lekin 40 rupay mein nahi mille pata hai. Hai na? Ab nabbe ke niche nahi jaya hai. Rupya bhi gir raha hai. Ab isse koi nera dena hai. Lekin kya hota hai ki ek baar, you know, threshold aapne badha diya, badha diya. Ab 90% wale ko due admission nahi mille ga. Threshold badha diya, ab 100% mein mille ga. Ab 100% kaise paar karo ga? So you know you are actually raising this. It looks very simple, like you know, two to three years. But remember, with two years, at least people who have hope will say, okay, two years legislature will review. Inevitably they renew that, but still there was some hope. All this review process is gone. Tada was two, Pota was three. UAP is permanent. There's no review. It's permanent. Right? So what came as a temporary has become permanent. It's a procedural thing, but it's an important thing, right? Which does not, is not good for democracy at least. Because, you know, there is rule. So, when, when we, we, we started, we had these laws earlier, but USA started with Patriot, which has nothing to do with patriotism, remember. Ha. Ha. But it's something about securing America, right? But Patriot had what they call sunset clause. Huh? That after so many years, it will cease to have effects. Remember in USA what happened? They don't frame a new law. In the penal code, such provisions are inserted. Or the is inserted. And then there's a provision that after so many years, these provisions won't be there. Okay? They will die as such. So Tata had, Porta had, UAP does not have. UAP, UAP has an interesting story. So 2004, when see quota was repeated, it's a difference. Your, many of your political science students, you, you need to know the difference between something which lapses and something which is repeat. Lapses because you know deliberately you did not renew that. But quota was something which was part of electoral battle. It was promised by U UAPA that they would repeal quota because it was misused. So maybe anyway, it, how will you think? You know, you were so young. But you know, for someone you know with, with a certain memory, I would say that you can't even think of that. You know, someone, some party actually bringing is part of electoral battle and saying that you know we want to repeal UAP. So it was a big thing at that point of time that they repealed. And they made false promises that they did so they repealed. But slide of hand was when they repealed. Many provision for quota was brought into USP. Aapne kiya kya ek taraf to aapne repeal kar diya. To aapne constituency ko aapne satisfy kya aur bhoos achha kya. Par aapne uske bhoot aise provision hai usko UAP me dal diya. So one of the provision which was brought in was about this thing. Interception of communication. Bless you. Cell phone and others. That was this. Now by bringing this. See, when you get bored, someone will have to say stop and ask questions. And what do I want to say? Because you know, we have a habit of speaking. And if you go to the end of the day, they think, you know, I'm going to go to the end of the day. So, it's going to happen. Say it. What's your name? Akash. Akash. Check it out. I'm going to go to the end of the day. So, repealing was a political act. It was passed in the legislation. But what they did, they brought interception. Under quota, you had a power to intercept communication. Huh? 
all these telegraph was of course there under telegraph had but mobile communication of course but they have a safeguard they have a safeguard there right that those things which were intercepted then they have to give a report right and you have to inform the defense about this now that safeguard is gone the provision of quota was incorporated in the uapa minor safeguards so if you doing research into trying to learn what you will find you know that something which i said the quota compared to all such law was a modern act today if you what you say quota better thanks because there were actually some safeguards right here you don't have any safeguard okay that's important thing but one thing remember you do your political science and you talk in terms of epistemic break as to the said marks and epistemic break between old marks and new marks right the humanist marks and the scientific marks that's a debate over here and i need to bring this because you know, it's not a uniform story history does not move from one state to another right forget that history so with the nazi history went back and china is probably as capitalist probably most successful capitalist country today right Communist Party is ruling अगर आप Communist Party के हो तो फिर हो लेकिन Capitalist हो वहाँ पे चाइना में हाँ इंडिया में जो का हो so in this case what happens there's no one way process one major distinction was that Tata and Porta were infamous for torture how law and torture go together there was a provision for confession right that anything who confess before a police officer of certain rank that confession will be used against you and you know the constitution provision for safeguard right for those who don't know safe you know how should i assume although many of you know more than me but abhi mai hi bol raha hu so article 20 protection <laughs> in respect of conviction for offenses part 3 This is fundamental right section of Indian Constitution. Remember, this is Part Three, and there can't be anything more sacrosanct than Part Three. And what it says: protection in respect of conviction for offences. No person accused of any offence shall be compelled to be witness against himself. No person, remember, not except no person accused of any offence. Remember, in Constitution, every word matters. Right? It's all about these words. What comes in? So no. Person accused of any offence shall be compelled to be witness against himself. So, I commit, no, to me to me. You commit a crime, fine. Me on par kya hogi? Me tum chilo jaye, tum log uti jaye. But you know, you go to police station, fine. You say no, I will done. Dada, Baba, I will done. You know, you plead, you back flow. You know that third. Ultimately, you say okay. If you say so, I'll write it down. I'll put my thumb. I'll put my signature. Empty paper box. Then they'll write it. Okay. Fine. You succeeded. Thing is, you succeeded in getting my confession. Did you really solve the crime? Because it may be you, it may not be. And there's actually an experiment. I mean, with Al Qaeda, they did. They could not succeed. With torture, you don't get the truth. <coughs> torture is. You remember, you and me. I mean, tomorrow if you get a crash hit, most people will say, "I'm going to remember." I'm not going to remember. Make a right number. At least you want to save your skin. You want to save. It's not about you know your conviction that you're doing it. So, by those means, you take confession. It's a bad law. See, I don't use the term bad law otherwise, but because it opens up possibilities of torture. Because you know. Now we have a power of the police that if I get statement from that person of his or her involvement, then it's easy for me to prove in the court of law. Supreme Court later brought some safeguard and safeguard for like do's and don'ts of Aspa that you know is not under coercion and many things they had listed you no know, safeguards and things like that. But anyone who studied find out that you know under Tata confession. Was literally the same of ten, fifteen, twenty people. How can means as a human you know that your handwriting is different. As a human you know that you can't write the same sentence what he's writing or she's writing, right? How come it's the same sentence? So of course you know those statements were given, right? One, two. We cannot discount the fact that 
this torture policy did not succeed. It did succeed also. It's not that torture does not succeed. Torture succeeds also. Issue is, would you as a part of democratic India accept torture? I'm giving, I'm accepting that torture succeeds. Right? Then what do you do? Would you like that to happen? Because no, that's the scenario which is presented to us. Person with a bomb is about to explode, or who has information the bomb bomb is about to explode, and then you torture and you get the truth. How many cases you're talking about over here? 24,000 people are arrested. Would you use the bombs, you know, analogy for every accused? Right? So we can't generalize anything. So I'm saying that sometimes it did. They Tada as a law failed, but Tada as a policy of coercion did succeed in many places. Having said that, we as an Indian in constant democracy do not believe that torture is the way to go out. As simple as that, right? In that sense, so you have both evidences. Law failing in spite of draconian measures. Tada failed, everyone accepts. In spite of you know confession clause, and Tada remember not only you. So Rana Dina, Tada me kya hai na? Tumne confess kiya? Shivam. Tumne Shivam ka bhi naam na kiya. Ab Shivam bol raha ki hamne nahi kiya hai. Lekin Sumer ne bola ki Shivam ne kiya hai. Dono gaye. Co-accused. You know you actually can bring both co-accused. Four times it was a difference. It wasn't co-accused. It's only accused. UAP confession was not. So in that sense. UAP is not as draconian as Kota and Tada. <coughs> but if you think that's the entire story, all organized crimes had, still have confession. So Kota was actually framed on the lines of Mara's, you know, Organized Crime Act, Makoka. It was framed on the same lines. So first it was about ordinary criminals, organized crime, it was used against political actors. Right? Everything happens like this. Encounters, first decoys, pindaris, etc. etc. Then political actors come in. So we remain silent when rule of law is violated against ordinary people, the poor people, the marginal people. Then it comes to those who are political activists. Right? It's been you. So there is a difference between Tata, Kota and UAPA in terms of confession. But part of Indian law, law framework, confession is part of PMA. That's what I read to you. It's part of PMA. Confession is part of Organized Crimes Act. Confession is part of the Chhattisgarh Act, which is against crime, right? Against terrorism, as they call it. So all these principles retained. That's why these are extraordinary. Because these are extraordinary because of the provisions. There will be police also a certain rank will, uh, you know, investigate. It will go to special courts, right? It will be, you know, there are special provisions to deal with that, including confessions, which is not part of UAPA now, but border of proof is reversed, which is part of UAPA. But many such laws coexist. So UAPA is one, it's exemplar, but with that, there are many others. If, if anyone is accused, it's not just UAPA. Along with UAPA, you will find Beijing war. Along with that, there will be sedition. Right? So, two laws, two range of laws, Extraordinary laws and ordinary laws do not remain separate. They interlock. They go together. They interlock. Right? So, in Parliament, that case, and then I sat through the trial in lower court, in the special court, and I saw the happenings in the government, which was a good exercise for me. Uh, so, your interception under quota requires certain safety measures. Right? If this does not happen, then they brought in Telegraph Act and use that for conviction. See, law does not stop with a code, law does not stop with one law. The criminal justice system will utilize all such laws and they have every right to do that. So don't think you are under one law only. At the same time, all other laws will work upon you. Right? So if the safeguards are safe, you know, acting as a safety bond, other provisions will come in. Remember, 
and that's a big jump I'm making. There is a very distinct element of politics over here. It's a reflection of the politics. So I use the term and many others use the term legal regime. Legal regime is not the bare act. Legal regime is the politics around that act. After a parliament is political parties who are represented, right? they are the ones who make the law. And there's ideology around that. Never forget ideology. Ideology is a very important component of that. It may not be written there. It's writ large. So when UAP was amended, it's, it's very, you know, in a way academic interest, but you know, as a condition we take interest in smaller things and we think, you know, we do something. So India and outside, earlier it was only India. But 2004 onwards, because we were actually in the full blown global capitalist development. Industry is from India, the big corporate houses are from India. Tata were going to Britain, Reliance were going somewhere, Ambani and Dani were going somewhere. So, like Western imperialist powers, India also was flexing its muscle as a you know, emerging global power. So, India and outside, so if it if happens anything outside, Indian government has a right to punish you. Right? It, it, the scale has widened as such, okay? And likewise, because money laundering, it will be anywhere. So, ideology part is absolutely important. So, there is the image, the changing image of Hindus will be reflected. I am not saying Balagopal wrote this, long time back, the portal, right? UAP is the la largest thing, right? And it started with one small state startup, one state, two union territories, Punjab, Chandigarh, Delhi. He was a full business all. It later became part of 28 states. So what is projected as immediate problem, extraordinary situation, terrorism, how come entire country comes under the ambit of that? There's something utterly wrong about it. So you, okay, Kashmir is the issue and you bring certain laws, you're doing it. But see, okay, let me move. So there's parallel system called detention law. The first point is, UAP is not supposed to be detention law, it's subtractive law. You convict, you put in trial, convict, punish. Or they found innocent, leave it. That's the thing, and that should happen. That's the minimum thing which you expect from our criminal justice system. Okay? People put on trial, don't delay it. Because by the time you put on trial, 10 years, 20 years, they have actually crossed the threshold limit of the punishment, maximum punishment they will get. And this is happening with such laws also, and ordinary courses also. But especially in such laws, people of certain ideology are being targeted. Okay? Constitution has a provision for detention law, you know that, and part of fundamental rights. Different MSA came in, right? Jammu Kashmir has this PSA, Public Safety Act. Two years, gone. You are released, another two years. So you keep on, and remember, detention is not crime, and detention is not supposed to be punishment. Now, don't turn around and say, okay, sir, you uh, don't have to go to the You know, it's, but it's not a crime uh, because you're not convicted. Uh, so it's, it's preventive. Right? So it's not supposed to be for you know, you being the, you are actually securing society and for prevention, this election time, many are put in preventive detention. That's very interesting. You know, our celebration of democracy and lacks actually put behind bars because it's detention. Kashmir is PSA, otherwise all over the country it is NSA. Manipur has highest number of arrests under NSA. And that's a different story. So you have this many, many parallel systems running around. Right? We need to know the laws first and then we need to question. The data says that such laws have not succeeded in terms of actually validating the law. But the lawmakers and the political establishment are not concerned about it. Because the purpose is being served. They are not interested in conviction. They are actually interested in putting these people outside the public purview so that they beam up for an case. Goes on, on and on about only bail thing. But maybe they have you know they have committed a crime. But for us citizens, why don't you put on trial? Bring evidence. Let us know. Right? And you know, we'll, we'll have a fair judgment about it. 
but you don't do that and you keep them in prison for years and years and someone will die even that's the problem there so it's been turned into detention law which is not supposed to do that in that sense also law is failing rule of law is failing i think i should stop